Hello everyone, my name is Faz from Nintendo Players UK and I'm here, I've now returned to the Kanto region as I am now here <laughs> with the legendary at this point, uh, Veronica Taylor and if you don't know who she is, she voices Ash, she's basically the voice of our childhood, let's be honest, she is. So, hi Veronica, how are you today? Hi, <laughs> thank you, I'm fine. Thanks for that lovely introduction. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, I'm happy to be here. Ah, thank you very much. Um, how is everything going? That's probably the first thing I need to ask because um, obviously California. Yeah, things are fine where I am. Uh, actually, the, we're just affected by smoke and ash in the air. But it's, um, gosh, California is burning. Um, and it's it's pretty traumatic for everyone. Mm. Um, well, I'm glad you are safe. That, yeah, and thank I you. hope everyone who is... In California, I hope uh, you are all okay too. Um, but I thought I'd at least get that out of the way now because I yeah, know thank you. you are California based. Um, That's so right. And I think it's, you know, for all of us, it's uh, figuring out how best to help those in need, whether you see something that's so in your face like this where people's homes are gone or you've got flooding or you have homeless people who need help. I mean, it's just, uh, I think we all need to be aware of how we can help those in our community. And it strikes in all different ways. And unfortunately, it doesn't take a holiday. So this is just a giant reminder of that. Um, and I guess we could say it just starts with a tiny kindness, holding the door open for someone. Um, and so here we are with our little like um, moment of kindness where we have some time to chat and um, get to know each other. So, Thank you so much for taking the time up to talk to me and, of course, the UK fans here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Uh, so let's get the more obvious questions out of the way. Uh, so what got you started into voice acting? Um, gosh, I, the long answer is that I started acting when I was five and I did all the plays that I possibly could. I, I did little, um, gosh, I used to do little interviews of myself in my room, you know, like things like Sounds that. So like I've always exactly been... exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and me too, actually, here in my little closet. Um, but then I went to college and grad school for acting. I toured the United States with a bunch of different shows and acting companies. And I moved to New York. And uh, I guess I got a recommendation from an acting coach to do an anime audition. And I booked that, and they said, oh, can you audition for this? And I booked that. And then, you know, it just kind of came around. I was working on Slayers, mm. uh, which is a, I don't know, a fun anime, um, one of my favorites, actually. And I had the opportunity to audition for Pokemon, which, um, you know, was just another project, it seemed. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and so then, you know, my career kind of kept going from there. A lot of it is basically networking. Ah, so you said that you had been put into uh, the audition for Pokemon. Uh, did you f go for Ash first, or was it just a was it Ash's no. mom? Was it what was the voice? You no, we for? all we all got to audition for whatever characters they knew about at the time. Um, gosh, it was twenty years ago, and so I do basically I remember uh, watching the little clip of the show because they wanted the voices to match what the original Japanese actors and actresses did. But um, I probably auditioned for everything, which at the time was probably Ash, Misty, Brock, maybe Team Rocket. Um, the, only the basics, I remember. Uh, okay, so um, you watched the original Japanese dub. And obviously, we saw a, the, sorry, go on. Yeah, we saw a tiny clip of it, like a, a minute maybe that was in a loop so you could kind of grasp what the voice sounded like. And um, and then you had to base your audition off of that. We didn't see a whole episode. Oh, okay. So uh, before we get into Ash, uh, you said mm -hmm. you had tried for Misty, and I'm guessing you did for Brock as well, and Jesse. Probably more Misty and Jesse. But uh, when you uh, heard Jesse and Misty now compared to the one you did for the audition, is it completely different? Was it similar takes? What do you, What was your thoughts uh. on that? I have no idea how similar or different it was. You know, I I then and now audition for so many different things, and basically you just kind of pop in, do your audition the best that you can, and then you leave it behind. Um, I was doing a play at the same time that 
um, these auditions were. So I was traveling uh, back to rehearsal. And, uh, you know, it's all a fog because it didn't really matter what I didn't get. It just matters what you do get. Hmm. So um, I have no idea what... And also, this isn't an audition that we prepared. We just went in, listened, and auditioned, and left. Hmm. So I have no idea at all um, what that possibly could have sounded like. Okay. So now we've got to get into the questions about Ash. <laughs> okay. So okay. So when so let's start at the beginning. Ash's voice. Um, uh huh. How did you? It's on. I know you've probably answered this question a bajillion times, but at the same time, we the UK fans. You don't get to see these interviews all that often. So, uh, where did how did you sort of tackle Ash's voice? Was this sort of something that was generic to you, or was this something that was um, you had a there was a particular twang that you went for? Well, uh, originally I was trying to match what was already there. So, um, and then once I got the role, then I I kind of had ideas that I could connect on to. Um, my brother was 10 at the time, and I had recorded his voice. Um, I was a fan of Speed Racer mm. and Spridal. I liked his voice, and also um, Rudolph from those stop-action Christmas specials. Um, she thinks I'm cute. He's all kind of up in here. And um, the Ash, I think, was kind of mom come on around uh, it's probably a little more stuffy <laughs> a lot of uh, boy voices done by girls or a lot of kids voices were very kind of stuffy at the time and I think um Ash's voice is a little it changed or was allowed to change within the first season um so uh, uh I can't even go back to that because I don't listen to it enough but he eventually settled kind of into here so he could have some lows and highs and oh uh, you know, all about there. Um, and I think more than kind of what his voice should sound like, I focused more on who he was as a person, who this, who his character was. And so, um, you know, I, and that's what I thought about the whole eight years that I worked on the show, is being true to the moment. Because even though you're doing animation, you still have to play the scenes and the emotion and, um, I don't know, bring those moments to life, I guess. So it's more about who he is than what he sounds like, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. To be fair, uh, you can't see my face right now, but my face is beaming because you just did the voice and I'm like, oh my God, this is all back again. Sorry. Oh, hey, uh, Fess. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're doing it again Jesus I'm just not gonna I'm just just, just gonna go cry in a corner because I'm so happy <laughs> <laughs> well there is something wonderful about um, you know our voices in general what we recognize as a baby and what we grow up with and you know the shows that we uh, watch the people in our lives there in that sense I think our our voices are so powerful and the fact that we can relate to different people or sounds or in this case ash is a, a character who has gosh he's a person even for me has so much joy and compassion and um and that that grit i guess you could say of going after his goals and still trying to help those around him there's something um like a, a pure love in that for me when i get to talk like him and it's it's interesting that that a voice can have such a reaction um i i i am quite honored to be part of that but also i i don't take that responsibility lightly i'll tell you that um it is pretty cool uh, uh at this point so you said this was in because it was 1998 you started voicing as ash if i've got the date correctly. that's right that's right uh, so that's about a year or two after pokemon yellow uh, sorry pokemon blue and pokemon red came out um the, were you aware of the games at the time? No, not at all. Oh, okay. um, in fact, the only thing I'd ever heard of about Pokemon after we auditioned for it, um, and maybe even after we started working on it, I can't quite remember, was that the show had caused seizures in some children. Um, oh, the and yet I still uh, worked on it. I'm not sure <laughs> what that says about me. But... Um, the, that's the only thing I ever knew about Pokemon at all. Um, it, 
now obviously Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee came out, but um, when I did some uh, some slight research, uh, Pokemon Yellow was kind of taken some stuff that was from the anime. Um, so uh, did you ever know about this game when that came out? So this is now after Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon sorry Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Red. Um, Pokemon Yellow had come out because it's meant to take cues from the games. Uh, sorry, from the anime. Um, right. Did you were you a part of that in any way in terms of its promotion? If that makes any sense. We weren't part of any promotion uh, at okay. all. No, that's. Cool. Um, yeah. They really wanted to. I would say four kids really kind of kept us out of. Um, they certainly kept me away from doing interviews, and they really kept us out of um, anything actually. And plus, in ninety eight two thousand. Nobody really used computers that much. I certainly had a cell phone, but it was for emergency use only. Um, you know, yeah. so it's not like we were all digitally connected like we are now. Um, so no, I didn't do any of that kind of stuff. I've just I heard of the games. So cool. I will tell you that. Mm. I certainly heard of them. I knew that they existed. Now that I've forgotten this, it's about 20 years since yeah. the... I didn't realize it was the 20th anniversary until now. So it's actually the 20th anniversary of the anime as well? Wow. Yep, that's right. Here in America, at least, and probably UK, because um, it, uh, it aired... Actually, right now, Thanksgiving... Well, let's see. Thanksgiving of two, two, 1999 was the first movie, I think. Um, and we started September of 98 on air. So you might have gotten it the same time that we did in the U.S. Oh, wow. Um, but, yeah, the because I remember the opening weekend for the movie, it was gigantic box office. And when you consider that 20 years ago, most of those tickets were child prices. And so there were a couple adults bringing a mob of children with them, and they still had a massive uh, box office over the Thanksgiving, which is now in America, uh, weekend. Um, and it was just one of the biggest children's films, I guess, ever. Um, and when you compare it now, um, I, I, I can't even I don't I can't even fathom it. It was just really big. Okay, I didn't. Oh wow! <laughs> I've yeah, this I was is good eight that I'm... at the time. Okay, I was eight. At, I was oh. legitimately eight, or I think seven at the time. I was. Right. Uh, so this is like this. Effectively, this is my age. I was one of those children going to the cinema and asking my dad, "Hey, can we go to the cinema, please? I want to go watch some Pokemans." Right. <laughs> and I was just saying recently, I saw the first movie. Um, they had it in some theaters here in the U.S., and my daughter and I went. Uh, my daughter, who was uh, born at the end of the first season, so she's kind of been a Pokemon child her whole life, too. Um, and when I first went to see the movie, you would go in, and like when you went to see it, um, and it looked like the whole theater was empty, but it was because everyone was too small for their heads to be seen over the seats. And then I recently went, and and the seats were all full because those children were now adults and um, saying the lines to the movie and singing along with the music. And it was just an incredible experience. It was then and it is now. Okay, so, <laughs> so this kind of puts us neatly into the, into the movie itself. Um, yeah. So it was the first time you were working as Ash. You're, you're now officially the voice of Ash. And the movie has first come up. And um, how much did you know about the movie before going in? And um, how much did you... So what was your experience like from... I do apologize. I, I'm trying to word this question correctly. Um, so when you went to the movie for the first time, was that the first time you actually got to see the audience with it? Like when it first got premiered? Yeah, and the first time I saw the whole movie. So when you're dubbing something, you only do your lines. Mm. So um, with the series or with any of the movies, I just saw the parts that I was in. Mm. And I only saw my lines. So of course, when I had more characters to play, then I saw more of the show or the movie. But um, when I went to the theater, it's the first time I saw it as a whole piece. 
Um, and then the same thing when we worked on the movie, as you were asking. We didn't know anything about the what it was about or what was going to happen. We just went in and worked. So it's really, um, you're really playing the moments because that's all you know about. You don't know where it's going to go or what's going to happen in the end. or They don't give you, or at least they didn't, um, any idea of what was to come. Um, at these premieres, or even at any event, did you ever meet uh, the voice actors for Misty and Brock, who at the time I think it was Rachel Hillis and Eric Stewart? And um, did you ever meet Pikachu? Because uh, her <laughs> voice didn't change throughout right. the entire time. So Yeah, so... Um, I've not met any of the Japanese actors or actresses ever, unfortunately. Mm. That's one of my goals. Mm. Um, Rachel Lillis, Eric Stewart, everybody else, we would see each other at the studio kind of, you know, like I would finish my session and someone else would be coming in to record right after. Mm. So we all knew each other from also from working on other projects. Um, so it certainly isn't the... F- being at an event is not the first time I had met everyone, mm. but we never got to work in the booth at the same time. Mm. Uh, so uh, have you ever have you ever sort of been at an event together, if that makes any sense, as opposed to the booth, um, like at a, let's say, a convention? Because Pokemon has been so big, at least especially around 1998 to 2006. That was probably it's, you know, the, the it was just a phenomenon from there to there. And then, right. um, and it, to be fair, it just didn't stop. Uh, right. But at that point, it was in the mainstream, and everyone. It was just kind of part of the furniture at that point. Um, That's right. So you, so you've never have you met them in person in terms of outside of the booth, as in at, uh, events. Oh yeah, at at, events? we're all friends, and um, and all of that. So we've definitely um, gone to events together. We all lived in New York, so we would see each other there. There were some um, New York conventions we would all go to. Um, this year so far, meaning uh, 2019, there's two events where um, Rachel, Eric, Tara Sands, and I are all going to be. Um, and all of that is just dependent upon who invites us to things. So um, we just haven't been invited to the same conventions before now. Um, Eric and I have gone to a couple together. Um, but no, we've been friends for a really long time. Have you ever played Pokemon Go together? I think I feel like that would be something <laughs> I think everyone yeah. would want to see. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I never thought about that. Um, I have Pokemon Go on my phone, of course. Who doesn't? And I do play. I'm really bad. Um, I don't see them often enough to think to get together to play that. I suppose we should put that on our to-do list. I could just so, imagine um, it. For a second, yeah. like it would be yeah. like an entire redub. It's like a redubbing of the one of the episodes. You're just walking yeah. down the road and be like, "There's a there's a crabby." Yeah, I caught a Pikachu. <laughs> hey, hey, come on, Brock, Miss G, it's mine. Yeah, like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I suppose we could do that, and yet we would only be the ones enjoying it. Probably no one else. <laughs> it's like, huh? You sound strangely like that one person that I remember. I know. As a kid. That's so weird. <laughs> You know, uh, <laughs> the people would be like, oh, be quiet. I'm trying to play Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That, that image is too funny to me now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is good. We have a show in um, January, so maybe we'll do that then. Ooh, I would love I'll, to see I'll it. write that down in my calendar. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, the next one would be <clears throat> the next question I need to ask at that point. Um, what, um, so you've interacted with uh, fans since 1998, effectively. Um, in that time, uh, what's been uh, what's been your favorite interaction during that period of things? Because obviously uh, things have changed since then. But uh, was there any was there any moment while you were the vo- uh, you know, during that time where you thought, yeah, this is much bigger than I thought it'd be, um, aside from the movie? Well, um, when I was on the bus, um, like taking my daughter to school, the regular city bus, and. Um, I don't know, maybe that was, uh, it was so early on, um, seeing kids playing with the Pokemon cards, and there was a little store down the street from where we recorded that had tiny Pokemon figures, and actually I bought a bunch of Pokemon rings, (laughs) you know, weird stuff, that I was like, you know, you may want to get more of this because uh, this show seems to be big. Um, 
I think then when I realized how much it was kind of catching on, seeing an article in the New York Times about it, um, you know, my life didn't change at all working on the show. But the big thing was that people, you know, as an actor, people always say, oh, what are you working on? And when you can say, oh, I'm doing this cartoon, it's called Pokemon, and people go, oh, I've heard of that, then it they make you feel like you're a legitimate actor. But for most of the time, you can say anything, and they're like, oh, okay. Have you ever thought about, you know, doing TV? Have you ever thought about... People always say things like that, and as if what you're doing isn't really legitimate. So um, it was amazing to be working on something that people had actually heard of. Um, but I think seeing people or kids playing the games and everything was... Um, then I realized maybe it would have some longevity. Well, it's still going, so yeah, you're yeah, right that's about that true. One. <laughs> but because you know, the thing is, we I would just go to work, go in the booth, record, go home, and it's not like anything at the studio really changed, or that our lives were affected by the popularity of the show, except that we would get another year, and then at the end of that season, we'd find out there was another season. Um, so that, that was the greatest thing of all, actually. But it's not like there were mobs of people or I got recognized or, um, the work changed or, you know, it's not like any of that kind of stuff happened, but, um, just seeing it all around was pretty cool. Um, so now, so now you're at this point from the picture's perspective, Pokemon's big now, um, and uh, did you ever deal with the creators of Pokemon at the time, uh, Shatoshi Tajiri or Ken Sugimori? Or did you ever deal with Nintendo at any point in your tenure? Uh, no, I think some people from Nintendo came when uh, we were working on some of the video games. But we basically just had a, uh, like a little... Um, introduction and then go in the booth record and leave so it's not like we got to work with anyone or um kind of create any lasting relationship um all of that stuff I mean quite honestly was quite controlled so um uh, I would I wish that I um had actually been able to deal with them or chat more about what we were doing or any of that but it that just wasn't part of it um no, that's completely fine. Cause I know this day and age things have changed a little bit more way, um, where there are in some cases, for certain franchises, there are official voices, and in other cases it changes all the time. So um, it's interesting to hear that um, that that isn't uh, that you had a very limited um, a very limited time dealing with Nintendo. What was yeah. the, um, in the limited time? W which games were it on for, for specifically? Was it stuff like Pokemon Snap? Or was it for um, maybe? Yeah, we worked on a lot of things. Um, you know, the I guess p part of it, which is it's hard to explain to people who love anything, who love yeah. the games that they love to play or, you know, all of that. As an actor, I kind of, I went in and worked and then I went to another job and I went to another job and then I picked my daughter up and I went home. And so my life was, was just... Um, uh, gosh, I, I would say a cacophony because I was making so much noise. But basically, it's just a bunch of different jobs piled together. So the fact that I worked on um, Pokemon Puzzle League or Pokemon Snap or, or just another something, I, I don't really know what the games were. And it's not like we ever got a copy of them. So that, I mean, certainly there's things that I have that I remember specifically I worked on it because I have a copy of it mm. you know um and and so it's not that I don't care it's just that there's so much going on that I couldn't um I, I didn't need to keep track of it um so I don't mean to disappoint anyone to say I don't know if I worked on these certain games but I just don't um it's completely fine um yeah this it's is... just because it's so it's such a glomp together if that's even a word um, but it was just a time of working on a bunch of things. And even when we worked on those games, then I would go and work on another cartoon. Mm. And then we sometimes I could go into where Four Kids was and work on four different shows that day. So I, I don't always remember the exact character or anything because, but if I heard it, I would remember it. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing I attach myself to. But um, the specific names and everything, I, I don't know. Unless I wrote it down then, which I didn't, I don't think. <laughs> I have to go back through my diaries. Um, but anyway, so that's why I'm not, I just don't know. But anything that was Pokemon between um, 1998 and 2006, whenever, if Ash's voice was on it, it would have been my voice. Hmm. Um, and there were things where they were able, to, they were allowed to take stuff from the shows and use it on something else. So some of those things I might be in, but I didn't actually go in to work on it because they were just allowed to take whatever they wanted from what we did. So that's another reason why there's some things that I am a part of that I didn't know I was a part of. Um, you mentioned that you had uh, a lot of, I say a lot of, but you had some stuff that were Pokemon related merch type stuff, I'm assuming. Um, that I bought? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What some is, things. Go on. Yeah. Go on, you Not go a first. lot, because I've always lived in a very tiny apartment. Mm. So um, I have like my little Pokemon rings and... Um, people have given me some Pokemon-related things, uh, like Pikachu slippers. Those aren't too big, um, which are really my daughter's now. But, um, yeah, I didn't buy a lot of things, for sure. Okay. Uh, what was your, uh, what's your favorite uh, Pokemon-related, I guess, merch, whether you have been given it or you bought it yourself? What, was, what, what do you hold sentimentally for that, if that may ask? Is there anything you hold sentimentally that you have? Um, I keep every picture that people have drawn for me. Um, there's some incredible artwork that I've been given that people draw or they draw while they're waiting in line to come say hi or um, really beautiful paintings and, and sketches. And I keep all of those. Um, that I'm amazed at the creativity that has sprouted from Pokemon, from um, Satoshi Tajiri's brain. This whole him, if you imagine him sitting in his room and sketching out his characters and creating this universe, and then look what's happened. Um, and that other people have written stories and created characters and all of that just uh, from the joy of watching the show or playing the games. I, so I definitely keep that stuff um, more than anything else. Um, was there any... Oh, I forgot. I was going to say, what's your favorite moment? But that's kind of one of the fandom quote questions. So um, while I try to properly word this question, I want to go straight into the fan questions now. Okay. Um, so I hope you don't mind that. Um, no, I don't. Uh, with that being said, Jack Gone uh, asks, uh, how long does it take to record your voice or audio for an episode? Sure. Um, because for an, since we're talking about anime mm. um, and Pokemon specifically, it all depends on how many lines the character has. Um, I think we would figure about 30 lines an hour, um, and that all depends on um, I have so many factors. If you're fitting the lip flap, if the line is working for, um, for the lip flap. We've had great writers when I was working on the show who you know, meticulously as they are um, taking the ad the translation and they're adapting it, they're watching the flap and, and working it out so that most of the time by when we got the script, it had been approved through all the different channels it had to go through because it was on broadcast TV. Um, and so for the most part, if you had the intention right, you could get the line uh, recorded um, in one to five takes, let's say. So if you're thinking about 30 lines an hour, um, Ash, an episode could be anywhere from two to four hours, maybe. In the beginning, more because there were fewer characters. Um, later, when I was playing May as well, um, Ash maybe could be done easily in an hour or two because there were so many other people in the show. I, that, I forgot about that. That you had. Um, I forgot that was one of the questions I'd forgotten to ask about. Um, oh. What was it like voicing Ash and effectively May at the same time? Yeah, it was awesome because often um, I wouldn't hear any other voices before I record it. Mm. So if I do all of Ash's lines and then I would get to do May's lines, I would have a scene partner then, mm. so I could hear myself as Ash and play off of that hmm. and then um, you know when Ash's mom was in then I could work on that and you know and then all of us played other characters throughout hmm. uh, so that was always it's super fun it's not like when you do something prelay uh, when the 
you're recording first. You, um, you're imagining all of that and um, because there's no picture to look at. So the, and sometimes you have other people in the booth for that. Um, for anime, when you're dubbing, it's just you. So you, um, you know, you're, you're imagining things in a different way, I guess. <laughs> uh, now, I could probably ask like 10 more questions just based on that particular thing alone. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. So we might need to do a part two at some point. Maybe. I've got tons of time. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but then we'll actually have a two hour session and that would be probably yeah, more right. than a VO session. <laughs> well, that's because nobody would be able to listen for that long. They just go with, please stop talking. No, no, we're going to keep going. I'm <laughs> right, I, I'll continue with the fan questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alexander Leonard Keech, uh, Keech, sorry, I'm gonna, sorry if I said that name wrong, uh, has asked, did you have more fun voicing Ash in Pokemon or April O'Neil in TMNT? Uh, well, both equally, I have to say, but for different reasons. Um, with April, we all were in the booth together. We got to rehearse the show and then we all recorded. And um, I don't know, it, it, um, Sue Blue directed that and she's really amazing. So we got to play around a bit more and create the scene in a different way. Mm. Um, Ash, even though I was by myself, his energy and positivity made playing that role an incredible experience. Um, April didn't get to do as much. <laughs> She's She was more cerebral, I guess, than action-oriented. And um, Ash gets to go through so much. He's happy or he's... Um, mad and he's fighting and you know there's just so much to play there the range is great uh okay uh it just reminds me of the butterfree episode now <laughs> oh <laughs> what did you think of that episode when you when you were recording that now that What's, i think about it <laughs> yeah it's so incredibly sad i mean the uh, what I always say is that what's amazing about Pokemon is that we're in this world that is not real and yet is so real and that you have these moments of extraordinary emotion that we all can relate to and, and need to relate to because we need to know how to let go and we can – and uh, gosh, as an audience, I think um, we learn – to we can relate to Butterfree and we can relate to Ash in that, and so I think we learn how to be more human from watching this animation. You know. Cool. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that, uh, everyone yep. in the audience. We had a quite. Uh, we had to restart the recording a bit. Um, so yeah, uh, the next question I have to ask is it kind of neatly puts me back into it. Um, Rachel Dines, I hope I pronounced it right correctly, um, asks. Which episode do you remember having the most fun voicing and recording and why? <laughs> um, I would say all of them. I don't know if that's a answer that you That's accept, not an but, answer. Um... <laughs> we, all want, we, we want a definitive one. Ex- um, <laughs> well, definitely the first episode is the one I remember the most because we had to go back and fix so many things oh, okay. um, on that. I love Ash um, being so excited and then waking up late, which I know we've all done. Mm. Um, I love that he goes out in his pajamas, which we all always want to do. Um, but I, I, the the thing that was so great about that episode is that none of us knew what this world was that we were about to get involved in. Mm. And so it really lays the foundation for what's ahead. Um, and that's why it's my favorite one. Um I just, I don't know. It's just full of so many possibilities. Um, I, I, so yeah, I guess the first one then. Is it is it bad for me to ask outside of the first one? Because <laughs> <laughs> they all are a blob after that, quite oh. honestly. Oh, okay. So um, there's I unless I've watched them over and over. Like there's one um, the Butterfree one. There's one where um, Ash is in the cave with Snow Runt. Yeah. And um, they're freezing cold and they're all gathering around like that kind of I love that emotion. I don't remember things um, in the glob that is Pokemon in my brain. Um, specific things like um, uh, this gym battle or this whatever. I remember him peeking in the window when Brock is in with all of his siblings. That 
is so, I, I don't know why, but that really stuck with me. Um, there's moments that, that I remember as if they were real, kind of. Um, but I don't remember full episodes because, again, I only saw my lines. So everything is fractured. Would it be better for me to ask it that way instead? Um, what was your favorite <laughs> moment? Because well, you, those, you I guess. You mentioned, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. Um, I was going to say that you, you mentioned the moments that you mentioned so far, like very family and very somber-esque moments. And like, um, it, I'm guessing that's more to do with the fact that you have a family and kind of relates to that, I guess. Maybe. I'm an actor. Mm. I love to get into the, the meat of things, you know? Like, mm. there's nothing better than being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and figure out what makes them work. Um, whether those shoes be sneakers or, um, I don't know, what did April wear, combat boots? Or, <laughs> um, I don't know. But the um, the thing is, is that to to play the moments that make a difference, that's what acting is all about. Um, even I... I trained in stage combat, so the um, the fight scenes I liked because I I got to use some of my skills, even though I wasn't wielding a big stick or a sword or something. Um, but but I have an understanding of of where the energy comes from for those scenes. I like to act, um, and so the emotion is a better choice than just um, laughter, I guess. So those, I guess that's why those moments stick with me more because they, you need to commit to it in a different way. You need to jump outside of yourself. Okay. Uh, no, that, that's actually more interesting than I thought. It, uh, than, uh, <laughs> I say it, that's more interesting I than also, I Also, I have a family, so that makes a difference <laughs> too. But, <laughs> it's, oh, like, it's not that I don't care about them. No, it's not um, that. It's like, oh, wait, no, that was <laughs> way different. Than I, that, that went a different direction than I was expecting. That's all it was. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, the when you are a voice actor, mm. you are taking everything that you've ever learned about how to create a scene, how to... Um, go for your objective, all of your character study, and um, all of the work that you do on stage, which you are able to use your full body and your whole face to react, you have to just um, whittle that down into just voice. So you could have an eyebrow raise on stage, whereas you need to find a sound for that in animation. Mm. And so the, um, it's, it's like very um, intense acting, and it's, a, it's quite fulfilling um, when you get to play some great stuff. And so that's where you're, you know, the, the yearning and the reaching out and the joy of winning and the sadness of letting something go, all of that is, um, you know, the range of human emotion. That's what an actor wants to play. So that's why those scenes mean so much to me. Uh, Millie Wok, uh, I'm gonna pronounce this name wrong. Millie Wokoma uh, asks, "What's your favorite Pokemon?" Now I know it's already out there, so Pikachu. You, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. That was too um, easy. <laughs> well, it's not really easy when you see um, and Ikue Otani, who plays mm. Pikachu in all languages. Mm. She's so amazing and the fact that she can bring so much emotion to one word and that you could watch an entire episode just watching and listening to Pikachu and you would be you would be fulfilled from that she's amazing so what she does and the relationship that Pikachu and Ash have um, that's why Pikachu is my favorite we all relate to that um, kind of sibling or parent-child relationship. We all, many of us have pets. You can relate to how you um, you have to work together constantly to forge how you're going to go forward. And um, as we all know, relationships are not simple. Hmm. They require work and they require compromise. And that is embodied in the relationship that Ash and Pikachu have. So Pikachu is my favorite because they work it out every day. So, and also it's yellow and cute and, uh, um, but, uh, <laughs> but the, <laughs> but that's why, um, I think without that relationship, you wouldn't have a show. That's, uh, that's true. That's true. Um, so I'm guessing that if I asked you, if you were going to get, this is a what if, 
if po- if you had a choice between Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, I'm guessing you'd pick Pikachu. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what I do like is how Eevee has um, that unlimited potential in the evolutions, mm. um, and I think that um, Eevee is really one of the most popular other Pokemon, mm. especially right now, mm. and that unlimited potential is what we all have as human beings and it in a pokemon form taps into that and so everyone can like so many different evs they can like you know and i I won't go into all the names but you know what i mean um and that you can identify with that and you can change and you can still appreciate everyone else's choice because they're all from the same evie (laughs) you know and so um so i do think it's fantastic that that is this the other game that that they chose eevee for that um the let's go but you didn't answer the question pikachu okay pikachu i take pikachu (laughs) how could i not how could Uh, i not i had to be sure i had to be sure yeah um uh do you have a favorite eevee illusion no i'm sticking with eevee because i like the base uh just the very basic one um, and then that it can spring into to whatever after that. Everyone has their own choice, but I'm sticking with the very basic. Okay, just to put this out there because I asked the question, therefore I must, you know, answer. Answer, yeah. Uh, yes. Mine is Flareon because Flareon is underrated, and uh, y'all oh. who don't like Flareon need to go check yourself. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I think that advice has been heeded. <laughs> Uh, okay. no, you, you can all have your favorite stuff. Let me know in the comments. What's your favorite evolution? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, uh, and what's your favorite moment of that? Before I forget. All right. So next question. I'm I'm sorry. We're not even like we're about halfway through. The all right. I'll questions. answer. I'll answer much more quickly now. <laughs> we'll lightning so, round it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Peter Alexander Gurdjowski um, uh, asks. Did you ever order fast food in Ash's voice? In other words, did you ever pull any pranks at, with Ash's voice in particular? Because the uh, temptation is too No, real. I haven't. Uh, because mostly I pick up my food, and I can't go in and say, I'm here to pick up the pizza. <laughs> you, so, you, otherwise, I, I use weird accents, but I never use, um, uh, like, cartoon voices. You never, ever, ever. No, but I do answer the phone sometimes in a childish voice if I know it's a... Um, you know, someone calling for something. Telemarketer. Yes, telemarketer. Or, or an American equivalent, because we're here in the UK. We don't. We have just prank calls. Um, oh yeah, no, no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't uh, used Ash's voice for anything bad. Okay. Or she or pranky, claims. pranky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or so I claim. <laughs> Yet. Uh, yet. We'll see. Let's, um, let's see if we can try and get that to happen. Uh, I'm joking. Yep. That's not a challenge. Please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Becky Frost asks, if Pokemon didn't exist, I know, the horror. Um, I'm literally reading it as she's written it, okay? Um, <laughs> okay. If Pokemon didn't exist, I know, the horror. Uh, what lead voice acting would you want to be famous for? Or I think what she's trying to ask is, uh, which role would you be most proud for of outside of Ash? Uh, gosh, you know, I've worked on many, many things that no one has ever heard of. Um it's lucky for me that I worked on anything that people watched. So um, uh, certainly I'm really proud to have been part of the Ninja Turtles legacy. Um, I work on a lot of kids' programs that I really enjoy. I think um, kids' education, I think kids learning to read, it's incredibly important. And for me to play a small part in that um, brings me great joy. Uh, a lot of stuff I work on is for kids' literacy, actually. I even have recorded the dictionary for Scholastic, so that helps kids who can't pronounce certain words. You push on it, and then I say the word. So um, a lot of what I work on is unglamorous and um, important. As is the most best work, to be fair, let's be honest. The best work <laughs> is usually the most important ones. Um, right. So this is the last fan question, and it's not related to Pokemon, strangely enough. Uh, okay. Uh, it's by Nicholas Pete, and he asks, what's your favorite dinosaur? And this is alluding to Dinosaur King, I believe it is. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. Um, I did, I worked on that, and I've done a ton of stuff about dinosaurs, even uh, um, like Magic School Bus um, hmm. things with dinosaurs. Um, I'm fascinated by fossils, and I'm constantly reading about everything that they're discovering, and where, uh, gosh, the whole there's so much happening right now in the world. Um, 
so I'm going to, I think the Tyrannosaurus Rex might be my favorite only because I have a couple of those little plastic ones around my house. Um, I love the pterodactyl, and I think it's constantly being renamed, but I'll call it that. The idea of this giant bird flying around, it must have been terrifying and just so incredible to see. It reminds me of that one episode in Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Everything can relate back to Pokemon at some point. There is. There's literally a Pokemon it, called genius. Aerodactyl. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The I know, which looks a lot like a pterodactyl. How weird. Wait a minute. <laughs> Nani? Uh, yeah, there's a lot taken from real life mm -hmm. in that. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, all these, like, Pokemon bits flood into my head when you start talking about that. I guess we're all in the same world that way. This reminds me of that time on Pokemon where dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Maybe you should actually do the next Q&A like that. It's like, okay, we're going to talk about this specific time. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, it might all come back to me. Maybe right. I should watch a few seasons before our next chat. Mm. I mean, they did air it on Twitch Presents um, a while back, so, and they didn't went through the entirety up until the most current one to celebrate. Did they? They did. Um, wow. They went through the entire thing, and they went out it slow, like as in they went we, they went weekly. By That's these amazing. Episodes. So, um, uh, yeah. Oh, see, now we need to do that, but we can get actors together and we can live comment on it oh that would be cool maybe we could do that as like a nintendo players um what let's absolutely. watch absolutely we could have our little shadows as we comment you know so <laughs> i know be that's awesome. been done before but um yeah the definitely it would be um really great actually you could we could comment as well, I don't think we we really... Ash never ages, so it couldn't be like Ash 20 years later talking about, oh, I remember when I was 10. Oh, I remember that. You know, like, you probably couldn't do that. <laughs> you probably could just not do it as an old voice. Like, oh, I remember that time. It was just like last week. Yeah, because he hasn't changed at all. Yeah, he cause, hasn't changed at all. Yeah, because the, the ages and the timelines have changed, like, changed quite a bit. So yeah. it's like, it's apparently not a lot of time has passed between Kanto and now. So it's, uh, it's weird now. But in either case... Uh, thank you very much for joining me uh, today. Is that it? There, there's one oh, more this question. Has been s All right, go ahead. <laughs> there is one more question I always ask, but if okay. you really want another question. Um, Absolutely. I so enjoy my time speaking with you, oh. whether in person or um, over our handy-dandy Skype here. As we're so far away. Um, anyway. Uh, I was going to ask. Uh, so since you've inspired almost 20 years worth of fans, effectively... Um, and Pokemon's still going strong. Um, obviously, there's going to be people who will ask, how do I become a voice actor? So the question for you is, as a voice actress who has, you know, has had such a big name tied to them for so long, uh, and still are, to a lot of people, they still think you are the only Ash that is out there. Um, you, what is the most important thing for them to know if they ever wanted to get into a position like yours? Um, like into a closet like this, talking on a microphone. No, just kidding. Um, just step into the closet. Um, the uh, for me personally, I think your acting training is the most important thing. I do not think anyone should set out to be a voice actor. You should set out to be an actor. Um, there are, there are. It's hard for me to say it without sounding depressing, but there's much more time that you will spend not working than you will spend working. Mm. And so my career is a hodgepodge of um, uh, before my daughter was born, I did a lot of theater and some TV and um, I toured and all of that. And then once she was born, I, I wasn't able to spend the time going to rehearsals. And luckily my career turned towards voice-related work. But, but voice-related work means working on cartoons, commercials. Um, gosh, I work on English as a Second Language. I work on audiobooks. I work on other language programs that teach um, English-speaking people other languages. I work on voice recognition systems. I work on um, educational apps. All of these things, um, it, that's what comprise my career so you know Pokemon but 
but if I hadn't done all these other things, I would be living out on the street. So instead, I'm in my tiny apartment telling you, get the most training you can in anything you want to do. Because, like Ash says, you want to be the very best. And you, you have to learn your craft. And then get a demo together so that you can send it out. And then network with people so you meet like-minded creatives who can help you get work. But ultimately, you want to learn your craft whether you're a musician or an artist or an actor or a dancer or anything, um, a scientist, uh, you don't go in to like, do brain surgery if you just pick up a scalpel. You still have to learn. Um, and for me, that path was um, through getting a liberal arts education at college, and then I went to graduate school, so I have a BA and an MFA in acting, and that's definitely helped me. That's my long, long answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I. It's important. There's, uh, there's no easy road to anything. And you have to have your bag packed for when that door opens. And it's just luck that gets a door to open. But hopefully through your training, you can be in the right place at the right time for when the door does open. Thank you so much for the wonderful <laughs> advice. Welcome. You're welcome. Um, this has been so nice. Thank you. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, I've had a really great time talking to you, too. Unless, I guess uh, I didn't get to talk enough, but Ash, <laughs> come on, let's go, Mom! Or that was just for you, Fess. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so where can people find you if they want to keep up with you? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. I'm the, T-H-E, Veronica T., um, Facebook, I'm the Veronica Taylor. Um, my website's under construction. It'll be done at some point. Um, that's veronicataylor.net. <laughs> but then I post all of the stuff um, about what I'm doing for audiobooks and for cartoons and all of that on Twitter especially because um, then I can pass on what other people do. Twitter, I think, is great because someone can send me a drawing and I can pass it on to others. I feel like with Facebook and um, Instagram, I'm in a little bit of my own black hole, so I can like what you send, but I can't really share it. Mm. Um, but either way, um, and then I met a lot of conventions, so I always prefer meeting people face to face. Um, it's great to really have a moment to chat and get to know everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. Again, thank seriously, you. I can't emphasize it enough by how uh, thank you so much for voicing our childhoods, for inspiring us at a time. Uh, when Pokemon was getting bigger and especially a time before the internet really took off. Yeah, um, when everyone watched it together and, you know, I mean, do, it reinforces that need for community that we all have. And what I've learned in traveling to conventions around the world is that we are all part of that community even though we've never actually met. And Pokemon is a great way to get started with a new friendship and realize how much we all have in common. And then as you start chatting, you realize you have more and more in common. So um, it's a great unifier. And I'm just so honored to be part of this community that, um, gosh, it's brought, a, I would say, a deeper meaning to my life for sure. And meeting people within this community has really intensified that. So thank you all. Um, just being able to sit here for a minute and chat with you and your community um, we, uh, gosh, I hope it goes on for a lot longer. We have a lot of work to do out there. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yep. And yep. Uh, speaking we're of all together. <laughs> speaking of communities, you gave me a very nice segue there. <laughs> if you'd like to join our community as well, there's plenty of communities around the UK. You can find your own community or community near you using www.nintendoplayers.uk. Uh, alternatively, you can find us on Twitter at Nintendo Player UK. You can find us on Facebook at Nintendo Players UK and Instagram with the same name. And you can also find us on Twitch as well. Uh, so I hope you guys, we hope to see you soon on one of those platforms. And you can join our community and we could talk more about Veronica Taylor and her time. As <laughs> <laughs> talk more and more. Oh my gosh. Why not? Maybe, maybe one day if we can, you, maybe you should all tweet at her. Tell her she needs to start a Twitch channel and, uh, you know, do a Let's Play of Let's Go Pikachu. Maybe. Maybe. I, I have a Twitch. Does that count? It uh, does count. Uh, got a Twitch. <laughs> uh. No. Um. Okay. I'll look into that. That's on my to-do list. Also. How about that? Right. And then I'll come over and you can show me how to do that. Okay. 
Okay, we'll, we'll try to All get right. that done. Um, I'll let you know as soon as I'm back in the UK. Hopefully <laughs> next year at some point soon. All right, okay. Uh, thank you once again, Veronica Taylor. Thank you everyone who has watched and listened. Um, once again, uh, you can find us on all our socials. You can find Veronica on her socials. It'll be in the, the, it'll be in the description. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have enjoyed this interview. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this interview too, Veronica. I have, definitely. <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, everyone. And I shall see you guys later. Happy gaming. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.